We are so close to having an elegant to this solution. It's exciting. Let's use the concepts of the modulus and the remainder from the last video to complete what we're doing. Notice when we have an even power here, then we want to do an addition. So 0, addition, 2, addition, 4, addition, 6, addition. The odd powers, we want to do the multiplication. So 1, multiply, 3, multiply, 5, multiply, so on and so forth. Now I notice we have these labels left over, this back one and back two, when we were trying to do the uh, procedures and that thing. But we're done with that for now, I think, so let's get rid of that. We solved that problem using the stack. We have our multiply, we have our add, and what we want to do here is come into our procedure, do our check on the loop, and then at this point, after we calculate our next power, we have to ask, ask ourselves a question. Are we at an even power, or are we at an odd power? If we're at an even power, we want to jump over and do the addition code. But if we're at an odd power, we want to jump and do the multiplication code right there. And then once we run through the multiply, we want to jump back out to here. And when we're done with the addition, we want to jump back out here as well. You can think of it as I'm sending one rabbit down this hole, one rabbit down that hole. It doesn't matter, but both rabbits need to come out at the same location. Why? I'll show you why a little later. For now, just trust me, uh, for those of you familiar with higher level languages, we're doing an if-else. Right? Uh, okay, how do we set up these jump, jump locations? Well, here I'm going to call this spot right here, I'm going to call it pop out because that's where the rabbits will pop out and when they have popped out we want to jump back up again to right here and run our loop again and it will check and see if we need to run again and if not it'll jump out down here to done and then we need to label this multiply location and this add location let me erase all this off the screen for now hopefully that's enough does it bug you if I miss a little bit let's let's label this spot we'll call it do add and we'll call this spot do multiply multiply spelled correctly and remember after I'm done with the multiply I want to jump back out to the same spot that the do add will jump to so we labeled that pop out so at the end of the do add I'll say hey jump to pop out and right here we're going to say jump to pop out as well so let me just illustrate that one more time we come in we begin the iteration of our loop. Right here we need to ask ourselves a question. If we're at an even power then we're going to jump to do add. Do add will run and then it will jump to pop out. If we're at an odd power we're going to jump to do multiply, do the multiply code and then jump back out to pop out. So both of our rabbits will meet at the exact same location. Let me pause the video and erase all that off the screen now. Okay, good. The only thing left to do now is to ask ask ourselves that question we're trying to ask. Are we odd or are we even? And we need to do that with the div divide instruction. The remainder will be placed in EDX. Then we need to check EDX's value. So right now, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all that is being tracked by our count variable up here at the top, but remember the divide instruction like the multiply instruction, its first implicit operand is EAX, so I can't divide count. What I have to do is move into EAX the value that is sitting in count, and before we do that let's actually drop a comment up here. Check if we are at an even or odd power, and then right here I'll I'll put this on the next line to try to make my comments look a little boxy. So moving to EAX, the value that's in count. Let's XOR EDX with itself. I want to zero out EDX. Remember, with the divide, and like the multiply, we're dealing with the EDX EAX pair. Thus we can go up to 64 bits on the x86 processor. And I don't want these bits to be any value or adding any value to what we just copied into EAX from count. So I'm zeroing them out. Now we need to simply divide by 2. But the problem with dividing by 2, let me just build this and show you, we'll get an error. Immediate operand not allowed. We've seen this with the multiply. I can't hard code a literal value there. I have to either use a register or I have to use memory. 
And we've used up all of our registers. EDX and EAX, that's what we're using to divide into. EBX is tracking our base, and EDX is tracking our total. So registers are all used. So we're going to have to go to and make some temporary RAM. But it's going to be static, so it won't be so temporary. Let's call this even or odd check value. It will be a D word or 32 bits, and we you need to initialize it to 2. Remember, we want to divide by 2 and see if the remainder is 0 or if it's 1. So now I can say divide by even or odd check value. I'll just paste that down there. And the answer will be placed in EAX. The remainder will be placed in EDX. I don't care what the answer is. I want to know if this is a 0 or a 1. If it's 0, that means 2 divided cleanly. Thus, we are at an even power of 2. But if it's a 1, then 2 did not divide cleanly, and that means we are at an odd power of 2. Thus, we need to do the multiply. So let's go right here and say, compare EDX with 0. If it's 0, that means we need to do the addition. So jump equal to do add. Otherwise, at this line, we know it wasn't equal, so let's jump to do multiply. Multi and control L to get rid of that extra white space. Let me again draw the branching the branching structures. We come in, do our check. If we're going to do an iter another iteration, we go to the next power, and then here we say, hey, are we odd or are we even? If we're odd, I mean if we're even, then jump to do add. If we're odd, then jump to do multiply. Both of these will execute, and when they're done, they're both going to jump to pop out, and we've seen that down here. Do add jumps to pop out as well. So both of my rabbits come out at the same location, and when we're done, we've popped out, we say, hey, go check if we need to do the loop again, and if we need to do the loop again, then keep going. Otherwise, jump all the way out to done, and we will be done. Let's build this, Control-Shift-B, just make sure builds good. Build succeeded. Now the moment of truth. Let's bring up our chart again. We're going all the way to the value of 5. And if we get to 5, then our total should be 840 hex, which should be an ECX. And I can put that at the done instruction. I'll put a breakpoint there. We've seen that. Let's hit F11, Control Alt D, F11 into our assembly code. Let's find the end of our procedure. It's not this return because that return is our do next power. It's this return right there. Put a breakpoint there. Hit a 5. Notice the ECX register. That should change to an 800. Here we go. F5. Ah, our code's good. 800. We made five iterations. They were correct. Uh, we stopped at an odd power. That's nice. Let's try doing an even power. Let's bring our chart back up. And we'll go to 6, which would be 840. So let's go change our code. And simply by changing one number, which is our 5, I want to change it to a 6. F11, Control alt d F11. Find the return, which is right here. Hit F5. And we can see we have the 840. I'll bring the chart back up again. 840. I'm feeling good. This is good. This is actually really cool. And this is, from what I can tell, the most elegant solution I can come up with. If you have any more elegance, by all means, feel free to drop it in the comments. In the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about all this jumping we're doing. I'm going to explain why we set the jumps up the way I sent them up. There seems to be a lot of jumping going on, and, and I want to explain why I set it up that way and show you a less favorable way.